Good morning, everyone. It is good to finally meet in person after what two years of uh, online deliberations, uh, conventions, seminars, and whatnot. So, uh, welcome. Welcome to the first NREI Cloud Kitchen Convention, India's biggest cloud kitchen convention, powered by Pete Puja. I am Ivan Rodericks, and on behalf of the National Restaurant Association of India, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you today to this day-long convention. With that, uh, let's move on now to our second panel discussion of the day titled Roadmap to Raising Money and Scaling the Business. And I'd first like to welcome on stage the moderator of this panel, Sagar Daryani, NRAI Vice President, CEO and Co-Founder, Wow. Momo Foods Private Limited. Keep the applause going as Sagar comes in and also for the rest of the panelists as they make their way up on stage. Thank you so much. I'd like to now invite the members of this panel. Raghav Joshi, co-founder Rubber Foods. Let's hear it for Raghav. Raghav is the co-founder of the world's largest cloud kitchen brand by scale, the Sakura Capital, Goldman Sachs, and Kuwato Invested Rebel Foods. Welcome, Raghav. Next up is Rochelle D'Souza, Managing Director, Lighthouse Funds. Let's hear it for Rochelle. Rochelle D'Souza is the Managing Director at Lighthouse Funds, a leading mid-market private equity investment firm. She co-leads the investment team and specializes in food, healthcare, and agri-sectors. Next up is Ashwin Chadha, co-founder, Anikut Capital. Please greet Ashwin, too, with a warm round of applause. Ashwin has spent over 15 years working in the financial services industry, both in India and the United States. He started his professional career as an investment banker with Morgan Stanley in New York. Ashwin will join us shortly. Yes. And uh, next up, we have Vishal Jindal, founder and co-CEO, Biryani by Kilo. Let's hear it for Vishal. Vishal Jindal has 25 plus years of entrepreneurial and investing experience across different sectors and countries. Welcome, Vishal. Next up, Hari Bala Subramanian. He is an active angel investor focused on innovative startup teams. He practices lean startup principles and encourages founders to think global, act local, and build an organizational culture suitable for innovatives, innovation rather in startups. Welcome, Hari. And last but not least, we have Vikram Gupta, founder and managing partner, Ivy Cap Ventures. Let's hear it for Vikram. Vikram has over 25 years of experience in private equity, business consulting, M&A, strategy, and operations in healthcare and life sciences, education, consumer goods, and other industries. Uh, the same with the Q&A, hold your questions till the end. Identify yourselves, uh, mention the name of the organization or institute that you represent, and ask your question in a crisp 15 seconds or so. Sagar, over to you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, well, as you can see, uh, the investors in this panel have outnumbered the founders, me included. That means paisa bahut hai market mein. Wo kaise raise karna hai, kab karna hai, kisse karna hai is very important. So yeah, I mean, if you have to scale, you need to raise, right? Uh, that's, that, that's been how it is. I'll move to you, Vishal. Uh, so you know, I personally see there's a major belly expansion happening in the country. And it's about owning share of the stomach. Owning share of the stomach. You know, we, we talk about market share, etc., but it's about owning share of the stomach. We believe that at WOW. Uh, and, 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 and I'm seeing Rebel doing that also, you know, they have a house of brands. Uh, so there is a particular cuisine for a particular individual, there is a cuisine for every occasion, right, from starters to main course to desserts, right? You have been someone, uh, or rather, you know, you're sitting in a position where I was sitting maybe three years back prior to COVID, where you're focused on building that one brand, Biryani by Kilo, and you're doing it really well. Now, how would you look at I mean, do you at times feel like, you know, there is, I am missing out on, on adding more categories? Uh, or is it for you that, you know, you want to be focused on that one segment, that one sector and scale it to a level because the market is huge. Uh, India lives by biryani. I mean, I was reading one report by Razorpay which said India spent on biryani, they spent on BSC and bills. 
uh, in the last one year. So, so how do you look at this space? I mean, do you at times consider doing more brands, more categories, or would you want to just be focused on one brand? And what would be your advice to cloud kitchen operators here, those who are maybe beginners or who are at a micro or a mid stage and looking at scaling and growing? Hi, you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's a question I've been asked a lot of times by investors and a lot of new F and B. Uh, entrepreneurs. See, I, before being an entrepreneur, I have also worn an investor hat. So what I believe is uh, most good or great businesses are very simple businesses. Like McDonald's, if you see worldwide, there were around 30,000 outlets, close to $25, $30 billion of revenue, and probably $180 billion of market cap. You know, what I looked a month back, maybe it has changed now. Uh, same Chipotle, you know, 3,000 outlets, $5 billion top line, $45 billion market cap, and it's more than the DoorDash, which is the biggest in US, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, Seamless, or so many of, so see, even Gillette, if you see, uh, you know, they make shaving blades, right? So most businesses, we believe, are built on a category leadership and uh, where you have the pricing premium, the customer sways by a brand, they come again and again. See, food is a very difficult business, I would say. See, uh, if you see uh, uh, Jubilant in India, which is 4,000 crores, being Domino's franchisee, the next biggest pizza player, Pizza Hut, would be seven, 800 crores. The third biggest would be 100 crores. So you don't have here a TCS, Infosys, Cognizant, Wipro, which are similar. See, it's more a winner-takes-all kind of uh, categories because it's very difficult to build the moat. You, I think we were discussing, uh, Rochelle and we also, uh, see, you can have a very great, first of all, you have to have a great category, which is deep enough, which we chose biryani, uh, not, not luckily, but with a great amount of thought gone into it. See, it doesn't have an incumbent leader like in burgers, Burger King or McDonald's, or we don't have a, like a pizza, pizza Hut or Domino's. So once you have cho we have chosen the right category, and it's a very delivery friendly category. You can be in Dosa, but it's not delivery friendly. You might be great. You can be build a great offline business. So we chose a great category. Uh, it's a very deep category. We can be 1,000 crores and still growing 70, 80% CAGR. We can be the, if I can use loosely, the Domino's of biryani in the world, because it's not going to come from US or China. Right? So we have the IP now where we make biryani, although we make it fresh in handi for every order with the best ingredients, it's dumb cooked, but it's done in a cookie cutter way where most of the people I can pick up in the audience, six people, and we can train them for a week and it can be, and we are automating. So tomorrow we'll be in US, we'll be in UK, we'll be the India answer to McDonald's and Burger King. So for, we have less reason, if I answer directly, to look beyond, we, can, we will not be a billion dollar valuation company, we will be a billion dollar top line company just by sticking to biryani and being the worldwide leader. So that's one, but having said that, I'll have, you never say no, but uh, to the, so see, we, we also, see we do with one kitchen more than 20, 25 lakhs per month per outlet, right, a cloud kitchen single brand, and the older ones 30, 35 lakhs, so, but we also still want to sweat it more. So, you know, we, will, we can always go for things like ice cream or some dessert category, which doesn't add complexity to the kitchen, which helps us improve our revenue, habitats, and some adjacent categories. But having said that, you know, we are very clear that biryani is the deepest, very deep category, not only in India, but it's universally known in the world. Something we can take to the world, which can be India's answer. I'm repeating myself here. So, uh, so having, I think I've answered your question. So mainly it's biryani. And of course, at this, we are, we make great kebabs. So because you need to, when people are ordering biryani, they need some kebabs. So, and well. so never say never. Uh -huh. Biryani by kilo to bikega. Biryani, uh, pizza by kilo or ice cream by kilo ke liye rukna padega. No, <laughs> no, See, I don't believe that. But see, it will be biryani all the way. But, you know, we will need to sweat the asset. But very adjacent or some less complex categories, yes. But biryani... We wish to be a billion dollar top line company in the next few years. So, and you know, it's very scalable. 
We are at 200 crore. If you go 100% CAGR, billion dollars doesn't take too many years. <laughs> yeah, we think that this panel has very smartly a hole. Kiya hai. <laughs> Ex investor, 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 and even Rebel is doing mergers and acquisitions for investor. You are all investors here. I'm the only founder. One last question. Okay, I have three three people. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Definitely. Vishal, if you can address the same question for biryani where you make it in every... See, the, uh, what Sagar said, I'll put it, but he said this, I will almost say the same thing. See, there are two things if you want the output. I am an engineer before I did finance and everything and biryani. Uh, uh, see, the inputs have to be the same. So if I'm using the chicken or the rice or the masala or whatever I'm using, doesn't matter. It cannot, it cannot vary. It has to be the same, all the inputs at every kitchen. So it has to be centralized, the purchase. That's number one. Number two is your process has to be very dumb in the kitchen. In the kitchen, you cannot allow people to use judgment, but it's a very wrong way of putting it, but, but it has to be so dumb that a robotic arm should be able to do it. Every step of your process, it's so dumb and it's divided. If there is anything complexity, you push it back to the central kitchen. It doesn't matter. So our biryanis are made in a way a pizza is made. Although I repeat, it's a, we, of course we make the fresh biryani, the most authentic recipe of Hyderabadi, Lucknowi, Calcutta, but I, we use the engineer or a scientist mind to divide into infinitesimally small steps, which are dumb. You, you can do it, but you have to use that lens of engineer or scientist. Or what. So same inputs every time, input ingredients, and this a very dumb process, you will always have the same output. Having said that, maybe I'll take one more point on this, what's our, is the hiring and training and audit. How you hire your people, how you train them, how you audit at every stage becomes very important in this. So your training systems, training manpower have to be very robust, even on those dumb systems. Your audit processes, even for those dumb processes, have to be very, very robust and, and going forward, even technologically enabled. We have now uh, AI-enabled video cameras, right, which can pick up if a process is going back in. Or, you know, the feedback mechanism in terms of oven temperature, so many other things. So more dumb, technology-oriented. So some of these things, see, the reason in India, I'll just take it a bit forward, less than 30 seconds, is we have great brands. In Bombay, we might have great brands, but they might not be able to go to different cities or different countries. Not because there's no market, because people are not able to create those SOPs or that mindset. See, in US, there are a lot of big brands. In burgers also, if you see from McDonald's to Five Guys to in and out to Shake Shack, to, but see, in India, big, large scale brands can only be created if you're in multi city, multi countries. And for that, this mindset of the right SOPs, dumb processes, technology, hiring, training, and the very uniformity in ingredients and the centralized. So once you do all that, you come out with the same product. And that is the core of the business. No, definitely. Training is a very, very big part. Training and your process audits and maintaining those audits and doing corrective measures. Like I said, your pace of operation has to be higher than pace of expansion in this business. With this, I'll, I think I'll end this panel. It's been a very, very fruitful, engaging panel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the panelists, for being here. Thank you, the audience, for some amazing questions. Thank you so much.